the route was at 22 yards, and the ball was to be thrown two yards inside the numbers. Kurt could drop back and close his eyes, and the ball to be thrown two yards inside the numbers. He just got whacked. You don't see Isaac. He's five yards from his breaking point. As soon as he turns the ball, hit him right in the chest. That's the best throw I've ever seen in football. The best throw I've ever seen by anybody in football. You gonna be a football player when you grow up? Mm -hmm. Today is the best day of your life. Believe me, he might be the finest quarterback produced in the last 10 years. Philadelphia Eagles select Donovan McNabb. And they said, I'm the best decision this organization has ever made. Yeah, he, he, he's today, right? That's all I need. Fortunately for me, I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose my job. Football convinced me that life is a team game. That's right. It's a game for men. That's the life. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it. Was this the final game on the sideline for a great coach? I want to thank you very much for making my day in the sun so Few tales have had more unlikely twists and turns than Kurt Warner's Cinderella story. It started with a chance meeting and a dance with a woman at a country music bar when Warner was just 21 years old. We started doing this dance called the barn dance and you switch partners every like 18 counts and there he was in front of me. It was a perfect opportunity to ask her to, to keep dancing. We danced all night long didn't talk, didn't find out anything more about each other, just danced. And he walked me to the car when the bar closed, and I, I think he was going down for a kiss. I stopped him, and I said, listen, I'm divorced with two kids, 25 years old. I'm assuming you're going to be like 99% of the other guys, that once you hear that, you're gone. So if I never see you again, that's fine. And so the next morning, um, I'm taking care of an infant. I have a three-year-old son that is brain damaged and blind and somebody knocks on the door. As soon as I walked in the door, he heard my voice, came over and basically grabbed my big finger and, and took me around the house. Kurt didn't know it yet, but he was hooked. At age 21, he had already found his first two children and his lifelong partner. But his lifelong dream of playing in the NFL eluded him until he was 27. His rookie season, he completed four of 11 passes, and after it was over, the Rams left him unprotected for the upcoming expansion draft. Thirty-one teams are going to look at you. If one team claims you, you'll have to go. He was not claimed. I called him back. I said, you're still a Ram. To remain a Ram, Warner had to impress the team's new offensive coordinator. There was a lot of time spent over who was going to be our backup quarterback. And Dick was, was really quietly saying to me all the time, I think this guy, Kurt Warren, is kind of special. There's something about this guy, Mike. I just want you to really look hard at him. I knew that we had to stress him as much as we could. We had to take his face and put it into the fire and find out how he'd respond. And I was brutal with Kurt now, more brutal with Kurt than any player I've ever been with. I stuck a $50 bill with a pin on our meeting room, quarterback meeting room, said, that's yours when you can throw a spiral, you know. I mean, Mike was on him about every little thing. You wonder, why does the guy take this kind of abuse? Is he that bad? Boy, if Trent goes down, we're in trouble. I had learned from years past that it takes, you know, one phone call to say I'm coming home. So every time he'd call, I'd think, are you coming home? Are you cut? He would call and say, oh, I got yelled at. I got yelled at all day long. And I'd say, what'd you do now? Like, what? why can't you learn it? You're, you know, what's the problem? And he'd say, I don't know. I can't do anything right. This coach is on me all the time. I think the one incident that happened in the preseason that told me this guy's ready is we're in a run drill. The center snapped the ball and didn't come up to his hands. There's a fumble, and the defense got it. And I lit into Kurt for dropping the ball. Just lit, and I knew he didn't even touch the ball. But I just lit into him and just gnarled him. I chewed him for about 20, 30 seconds on the way back to hell. He never gave the guy up. He took the bullets, which you got to do. Didn't blink, didn't phase him. Great character and strength out of that moment. When that happened, he, I just felt like he was going to be special. 
<laughs> Got a hell of a job, buddy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Just relax. While Vermeil and Marge now felt better about their backup, nothing prepared them for what would happen to their starter. We've got Trent Green down. We've got Trent Green down in the middle of the field. I can remember like it was yesterday. Your initial feeling is, my gosh, season's over. We can't play without a quarterback. But as you go on and start thinking about it, you start thinking about, hey, there's no other way to go right now. I better be positive. I better show confidence in the people that I have. Kurt Warner checks in. Certainly not where Trent Green is and the kind of experience that Green brought to this offense. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. And we aren't going to go out and find some guy that's played 10 years and maybe even been to a Super Bowl. We're going with Kurt Warner, and I sincerely believe he can do it. Have a good one. Just stay within yourself. The quarterback that no one wanted then had a season no quarterback has ever had. In the opener, he threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns and won Player of the Week honors. Quarterback doesn't look bad, Jimmy. What? He doesn't look too bad. Quarterback? No, he looks good. I just remember saying, I made it. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. For at least one week, for at least one moment, I was considered the best in the NFL. Week one was only the beginning. Warner became the first player in NFL history to throw three touchdown passes in each of his first three starts. I believe the mark of a great leader isn't how great you are, how much you can do, but it's how, how much better can you make the people around you? Can you get something out of someone that they could not get out of themselves? We go to Detroit, we fell behind, and Kirk took his hits. This was the first time that I watched him become a leader because he started challenging guys. Kurt pushed, challenged the offensive line, the receivers, even myself. With just a few minutes left, I was able to lead the team down and we put the ball in the end zone to go ahead. Yeah, touchdown, man! Excellent throw by the quarterback, Kurt Warner. Marshall Falk came over to me and he kind of just looked at me and he kind of just pointed at his heart. So to have that come from our leader, now I really felt like, okay, this is my team. I've made it. I've earned it. And they're going to follow me as far as I'll take them. The Rams finished with the best record in the NFC, and Warner threw 41 touchdown passes. Only Dan Marino had ever thrown more. You've, uh, you've done quite a job, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, quite a Great job. For that chance. Well, hey, you got it. You've done That's the right. most with it. In the playoffs, Warner showed the three elements of his newfound greatness. First, it was his talent. He threw five touchdowns in the Rams' route of the Vikings. The next week, it was his composure. With less than five minutes left, the highest scoring team in the league trailed six to five. That is just a perfect example of the kind of poise Kurt Warner has. The most pressure he would feel any time in his career, he responded as if he'd done it 15 times already. In the Super Bowl, Warner displayed the third and most important part of his greatness, his toughness. We were throwing the ball all over the place. But with those throws, uh, I was taking a bit of a pounding. Towards the end of the first half, I got hit. Broke a rib or two. Went back in the training room and I laid on a table and just said, you know, come get me when halftime's over. I think he'll be able to finish the game. Two. Quarterback. Yeah. There was no question in my mind that I was going to play. I don't care what I've been through. I'm going to be out there playing. 
Kurt's the only one I'm really concerned about. Yeah, he's tough. He'll be all right. He's all right. He says he's okay. And I think he's hurting a little bit, but the doctors say he's okay. The Rams dominated the first half, but wore down in the second. With just over two minutes left, their 16-point lead was gone. Coach Romeo came over to me and basically said, you couldn't write it any better. You couldn't ask for a better script. Let's go win it right now. Let's go win it right now. About as calm and as collective as you can be, Kurt looked at Isaac. I basically told him I'm coming to you. First and 10 from the 27. Warner back to throw. Rainbow's the far sideline. And it is caught by Isaac Bruce. Makes him move to the 30. 25, 20. And they won't catch him today. Touchdown, Rams. I'm not so sure there are many quarterbacks that would have attempted that throw because he was, he was very clear. He knew Javon's coming off the edge. Most guys would move around a little bit, check it down, or... I'm not sure many guys are going to stand in there and take their shot he took. Of all the storybook seasons in NFL history, there's nothing like Kurt Warner's 1999. When the year started, no team saved him a roster spot. When it ended, he was the league and Super Bowl MVP. Congratulations. Oh, man. Oh, what a year. Love you, Coach. I love you, too. Thanks for the team. The most stunning success story in NFL history is even more remarkable once you learn what preceded it. Before he was the best player on football's biggest stage, Kurt Warner struggled just to get on the field. I've taken my share of flack for the fact that uh, we only started Kurt Warner as quarterback for one year in Northern Iowa. And then, lo and behold, his opportunity comes his uh, senior year. And then uh, he had a little injury, setback. Then we had a game where we only threw it, I think, uh, 12 times. And he started to get a little nervous about things. But from then on, uh, he really lit it up. In his final season at Northern Iowa, Warner was named Gateway Conference Player of the Year. Career day yesterday, 357 yards passing and four touchdowns. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to hear about it, Rick. You know, I hear about it every every Sunday from uh, Kurt. Anyway, you know, if we'd, we'd have thrown it that many times the last couple weeks, he'd had that many yards. Sure. And you know, I waited a long time for this, and and I'm just happy to, to finally get my chance. After his college career was over, he signed with the Packers as a free agent. I got a $5,000 signing bonus. And there was a no-brainer what I was going to do. I went out and bought a Green Bay Packer green GMC Jimmy, because, uh, of course, I was going to make it and be a Packer for life. The Packers coaching staff was loaded with talent, but so, too, were the quarterbacks, with Brett Favre, Mark Brunel, and Ty Detmer. I took a road trip up to see him, and I'd never, I didn't even really know what NFL stood for when he first told me. I mean, I know nothing about football. I'm in the stands at the Green Bay training camp, and I remember hearing somebody say, who's that guy from Northern Iowa? And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I know who he is. And I listened, and the next guy said, oh, he's a camp arm. And I'm like, no, his name's Warner. Most of the guys in Kurt's situation, I've played with a bunch of them. They're there for a week. They're gone. Do they get a rep? They may get a couple scout team reps. He's blocked, he's blocked. This guy's free. We're hot, aren't we? Steve Mariucci was our quarterback coach. He called Kurt Pop, Pop Warner. Mooch asked Pop to go in. He's like, uh, I'm not going in. He wasn't ready. I can't say that I've seen a lot of guys say, I'm not going in. He's maybe the only one. He wasn't ready. He wasn't recruited out of high school. He only played a year in college. He didn't get drafted. He shouldn't have been drafted because he wasn't ready. And he's like, how, how was it for you watching? I said, that was exciting. You were out there, and those people are huge. And I said, well, I have a question. What's a camp arm? And he said, why? And I said, well, somebody called you that. And the next day, he was cut. He, he didn't do enough to, to show us that he belonged. And for several years, he didn't belong. Eventually, he really belonged. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. Ty Detmer, myself, Mooch, you know, as, as Kurt's career just kept, we would always kind of joke about it. I'm not going in. No, yeah. I'll go in the Super Bowl, you know. Kurt's career 
Kurt left Green Bay and returned to Iowa, determined to get a second chance in the NFL. He moved in with Brenda and her two kids in her parents' basement. He would take care of my kids all day. He'd go work out with the, the college team just in case there happened to be a scout around and to stay in shape. And then the only job he could find was to do grocery store work at night. He still had his green Jimmy, but little money for anything else. We're driving back to her parents' house and we ran out of gas. And it was, you know, freezing cold and we were stuck on the interstate. And, you know, here are, you know, two kids. And, you know, it was, it was one of those moments where you just go, what, what am I doing? On the other side of the state, a team named the Iowa Barnstormers were playing something called arena football. Up to that point, I was just like, I don't know what arena football is. I'm so much better than arena football. Yeah, here's a guy working nights, stocking shelves in a grocery store, and all I'm saying is I'm so much better than arena football. Um, but it was that moment in the car where I said, I'm not above anything. I'm not too good for anything. If I'm going to chase after my dream, I've got to take the first step. Warner played well enough in arena that word began to spread. I called him up that that July and August and asked him if he still had some interest and in, to give him the 11 man gain him a shot. I'm like, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. I've got a pretty good gig playing arena football. I would love to play for you, but the only way that it makes sense to me is if you can get me signed with an NFL team where when I'm done playing for you, I can go into their camp and at least have that one last chance to compete for an NFL team. I knew nothing about him. I knew that Al had uh, contacted 10 to 12 NFL teams, and we were the only team that would bring him in and give him a workout. Went to try out for the Rams. All right. Had the worst tryout of my entire life. He actually called my family and just said, you know, I, I blew it. This was my last chance. I knew it was my last chance, and I just, I blew it. We were impressed enough to sign him. Did we know what we were signing? Not one of us, because I've talked to every guy that was there and involved many times since. What we thought we were signing was a fourth quarterback that could compete for the third quarterback job. Good read, Kurt. That was a good read. But always remember, on first down, you don't want to make you don't want to pass up a sure completion. He was very impressive as the scout team quarterback. In fact, he did so well, he was selected as the most valuable scout team player in 1998. One year later, the scout team MVP would win the league MVP the Super Bowl MVP, and a prize to make Green Bay a distant memory. I'm going to try to take that Jimmy out of your driveway. <laughs> Enjoy the truck. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. I appreciate it. Kurt Warner was on the road to being an all-time great. But beginning with his second Super Bowl, his storybook career would take a sudden wrong turn. years after winning his first Super Bowl, Kurt Warner seemed poised to win his second. The Rams were 14-point favorites over Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. You believe that, hey, we were going to step on that football field and we were going to win this game. We were supposed to. We were the better team. If, basically, or when we win this Super Bowl, are we a dynasty? Tonight, a dynasty is born, baby. For 50 minutes. <laughs> Warner was beaten like never before. In the final 10, he staged a furious comeback. But on this night, the storybook ending would belong to another quarterback who came out of nowhere. The Patriots, Tom Brady. The one game in my career that I've thought about more than any others was losing that Super Bowl and missing that opportunity to do something unique and special. Beginning with the next season, the magic touch he once had was gone. The Rams lost their first five games, Warner injured his hand, and Mark Bolger became the starter. When Warner returned to the starting lineup, 
he continued to struggle. In the 2003 season opener, he fumbled six times. Even though Warner was now healthy, head coach Mike Martz benched him for Bolger. That had to kill him. I know it was killing him, and I felt for him. But if it did bother him, you never saw him sweat. I'm doing good, you know. Just want to play. I know. Hard to, hard to sit and watch, but, uh, but I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Kurt was, was very supportive. He was as excited about Mark as, as he would have been about himself. You're living good, man. You're living good. That's who he is. He's very unselfish. In the 2003 playoffs, the dynasty that never was began to crumble. That is our bread and butter, the force. Force. We ought to throw force. As far as they off on the hash, we ain't threw a four all game. Yeah, we did. We just threw one. I'm talking about throwing a four, Mike. Throwing a four. We just threw one. A big four, man. Throwing a big four, man. Come on, come on. I'm talking about throwing the four, Kurt. I know that's bread and butter. I've been telling him. I've been telling him. Hey, you just got to keep your emotions. Damn. I got to credit him on his character. He never complained, he was always positive, and he was always, always encouraging. Very, very professional. I've been trying to be calm all game. I've been trying to be calm all game. Just stay with them. Just stay with them. Just be together. The Rams lost, and Warner would never play for them again. Kurt did not decline skill-wise. I was concerned about his thumb because it was injured, but ultimately that wasn't an issue. In retrospect, what impacted Kurt at the end with us negatively more than anything else was probably me. I think I had really stressed him. I would just put too much on him. After losing the Super Bowl, I was geeked up pretty good now. <laughs> You're that close, you didn't do it, and you start pressing and pressing and pressing, and you become a different person. And I think that affected Kurt. Selfishly, I'd like to stay together with him. Down deep inside, I wish we'd kept it together for a while. In 2004, Warner was signed by the Giants, but behind him was the year's top overall draft pick, Eli Manning. The unfortunate thing for Kurt with us is that he could have been really good if we had changed our system. Kurt didn't fit into the type of offense that we ran. Warner was starting to make some bad mistakes. The biggest issue they had with him was he seemed to be holding on to the ball forever. And Tom Coughlin and the offensive staff thought it was really hurting what they were trying to do offensively. They felt a quarterback with a quicker release, like Eli Manning, would make the offense run smooth. In hindsight, I don't know if that's the truth or not. I think they just saw the opening to do what they planned to do all along, which was get your future franchise quarterback so much needed playing time. We had a pretty good record that year when he was unceremoniously benched for the kid. We proceeded to lose eight games in a row. Despite Manning's struggles, Warner refused to create a quarterback controversy. Eli Manning's worst game as a pro it was a game in Baltimore. He was absolutely lost on the field against the fierce Ravens defense. Kurt Warner comes in in relief and is acting like the defense isn't even there. It's just leading the Giants down the field. And he said publicly that he didn't think the Giants should ever turn to him again in a relief situation. He said the best thing for Eli Manning right now is to go out there and never have to look over his shoulder. Kurt Warner would leave New York for Arizona and compete again with what the team believed was a young franchise quarterback. Arizona. The desert. A harsh landscape for life. And in the NFL. In 60 years, the Cardinal franchise had won one playoff game. Yet here he was, Kurt Warner, NFL's most unlikely success story, trying to resurrect his career one last time. Warner was asked to do what he did in New York. Help prepare the team's franchise quarterback. Think more about Orlando's and Houston, so you've got the six over the ball. Because okay. they're going to check back to cover two every time. 
He also took under his wing the best young Cardinal. I made my first Pro Bowl and I was feeling good about myself and we were at dinner one time at his house and uh, I told him, I said, Kurt, man, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I, think I, I think I pretty much got it. So I asked him, you know, Larry, don't you want to be the best? And he said, why? I, I'm good enough. Kind of was that lightning moment where I thought, okay, this is why I came to Arizona. I came here to establish something that's bigger than good enough. I wanted to help these guys understand what it looked like in practice, what it looked like in the meeting room, what it looked like to be the best. Depending on your personality, he knows how to tweak you. So if you're a guy that can't deal with being criticized, then he's not going to do it. He's going to pat you on the butt. Don't need much. It's all on you. This is what you do. This is what you do. Um, if you're a guy that needs to get jumped on, he'll do that. He would always jump on me, no matter what. We're playing against Seattle Seahawks. I was close to 100 yards. I wanted to get to 100 yards. I was like, Kurt, let me get about six more yards to get to this 100. He looked at me and said, are you trying to win this game, or is this all about you? <laughs> like, you do something wrong, I always try to get away from him. You know, I thought maybe he'll just cool down. You never want to get that stare, though. I even see it given to his kids, though. Like a little Elijah, not too long ago, I saw him and gave him that stare, and he, he had a little puppy dog face. Kurt has a way of uh, getting your attention when he needs to. I never got the stare from Kurt, but I did get the chin strap. The chin strap is my favorite. It's when the play comes in a little bit late, he's got to call timeout, takes the chin strap, and bang, down it goes. And he looks at the ground, takes about five steps, and looks up at you and puts his head down again. <laughs> <laughs> so we put a play in off of that against San Francisco. So you walk up to the line, you turn around, give me that look that you give me, and then you got defensive. You know what look? You know, so you know the look now. Pull that chin strap and look up the clock and start walking. We're going to snap the ball to Marshall on third down. He's going to run it. And it worked. Kurt Warner started to walk away like he was going to take a timeout, and they snapped the ball directly. As long as he's walking backwards, that's fine. What an actor Kurt Warner is. Look, he's looking right, unbuckled his chin strap. From stare to chin strap, it became the mouthpiece move when I would make a play call that he didn't like. You'd see him come out of the huddle, and he's got the big mouthpiece, you know, and he's like, you know, ripping that out, putting it in, and I mean, a, a basically a little mini tantrum. Tell me, what do, you, what do you want? The safety's right there. What safety? The safety's right there. Kurt, relax! He had amazing ability to remain focused in intense situations. They talk to you about what you'd rather throw. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to go out and play. Yeah. Everybody's got a bunch of but different this, scenarios. Huh? I, don't, I just want to react. I know, I know. I've, I've heard about 15 of them. I just want to react. He was so into the game that he really didn't want to hear much from anybody else. All right, smile for me, right? Act like you're having a good time. I got you. Try. I think there's a lot of things that, that make Kurt Warner special, but probably one of the things that you have the greatest respect for. You know, Kurt was always a guy that did a great job of getting the ball out on time and making the accurate throws. But there was a lot of times, especially on deeper throws, where he had to stand in there and let go of the ball at the last second and take a beating. The Cardinals were no longer thinking good enough. You know what? This is all honesty, man. No, no, but this is all honesty. I told myself, I said, I'm getting time. I got to play my tail off because if he would have had it, he would play his tail off. So I want you to know that, man. I, I thought that I thought that in the middle of the game. I thought, you know what? I have to step up and play because I'm getting time to throw, and he would, he would play good if he had this. But at home, the family had seen the hits over the years and wondered when is enough enough. The Warners now had seven kids with the addition of twin girls. Kurt was getting older and the injuries were getting bigger. I would say from the first Super Bowl win, I could have walked away because he had done it. They can't take that away from him. But I didn't want to be the one pushing him. He had more fire in him. He really did. While Kurt recovered from a torn knee, Brenda faced complications from her pregnancy and later suffered a life-threatening blood clot. Any one of those situations um, would have sent an average man off the deep end. I've never seen anybody be able to handle adversity so well 
and come to work, be the same guy every day, really just showed me how to be a pro. You know, what I uh, recognized or saw pretty quick was this was a guy that wasn't of the mindset of what I really was when I walked in there, that Kurt Warner's done. He had kind of been to the top of the mountain and was on his way back down. He definitely believed uh, he had a little more left. Warner began the 2007 season on the bench. In the fifth game, Matt Leinert broke his collarbone. The 36-year-old quarterback got his chance to show what kind of drive he still had. The very next game, get Kurt's first start, he dislocated his elbow. That would have ended the season for a lot of people, and there was no way. He, was, he, was, he fought back as quick as you could fight back. On some of his handoffs, he would cross over with his right hand and turn it over backwards. You knew at that point, this guy wants to play. In the last eight games, Warner averaged nearly 300 yards passing and threw 21 touchdowns. Kurt is on the Kurt? Yeah. Hey, it's like watching Madden. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. If he's on, he's on. But if he's off, if you don't pressure oh, him. Oh, Lord, we don't pressure him, he's on, period. During the end of the 2007 season, I don't know that there was a better quarterback in the league than the way Kurt played for us. That was really when everybody, you know, kind of looked and said, this guy is still Kurt Warner. Tough, competitive, the greatest I've ever been around. In 2007, Warner surprised the Cardinals coaching staff. In 2008, he would attempt to shock the world. When Kurt Warner was trying to make it in arena football, his girlfriend was on the other side of the state with two kids. Brenda was a battler too, a former Marine, but nothing could have prepared her for the events of April 14th, 1996. I remember, you know, one Sunday night, you know, getting a phone call from Brenda, and, um, you know, it was just almost hysterical on the phone. And she said on the phone, my parents have been killed in a tornado. Um, come quick. My sister and I were going to take my parents' ashes and, and let them out on this river that Dad fished. And we left the car, and I turned and I stopped Kurt, and I said, listen, if you're not going to marry me, then this is stupid that you're here in this memory, because this memory of letting my parents' ashes go will go with me for the rest of my life. So if you're just going to be a boyfriend that I dated during that time, that's stupid. Now, I can't imagine what that was like for him because he's already dealing with my roller coaster emotions. Um, but he looked me in the eye and he said, It's all right. It's all right. Kurt married Brenda and soon thereafter adopted her two kids her daughter, Jesse, and her son, Zach. You know, with Zach, he was born perfect and healthy. Uh, he was injured when he was four months old. Um, you know, had a, a traumatic brain injury. So when Kurt um, took us all on and took this little boy that, you know, was three years old when he met him, was told that he would never sit up, and now he's graduated from high school. He's done things that the doctor said he would never do. He's done things that teachers said he would never do. He's done things that we didn't think he could do. It gets your eyes off yourself. We learn from Zachary every day, just with his outlook and the things he struggles with and, and how he attacks every challenge that he's faced with. He's got gifts that, that I've never seen anybody else have. Really teaches us some lessons that you can apply to your life no matter what area you're in. Can I get a hug? Can you give me a hug? Oh, she gave me one. <laughs> can I get a hug? Throughout his career, Warner dedicated himself to giving hope to those who desperately needed it. In 2008, it was the Cardinals. Go. Warner set out to do the inconceivable. At age 37, he hoped to lead a franchise that hadn't won in 60 years to a championship. Talk to him. First, he had to beat out a now healthy Matt Leinart for the starting job. Everybody in this league, in this business, wants to go with the young guy, especially the one that shows promise and the one that's the high draft pick. Kurt was having trouble holding on to the football. He was. Uh, 
taking a lot of sacks. You know, there was a lot of criticism about that. Once he had shown at the end of the 2007 season what he could do and then continued to work on some of the things that we felt prepared him to play well, it wasn't a hard decision. You know, it really just came down to who we felt gave us the best chance to win at that time, and that was Kurt. The Cardinals began flying high, winning seven of their first 10 games. Oh, what a throw by Graybeard, Kurt Warner. But then, <laughs> crashed back to earth. <laughs> they lost four out of their next five. The team from the desert was playoff bound, but as cold as the New England snow. You know, after taking a bad beating, I got a letter from Brenda, and it was a letter written from Zach's perspective. Remember me when you want to give up. Remember I didn't. Remember me when you think life is hard. Remember my life is. Remember me when you want to hurry through life. Remember me. Slow down. Love, Zach. It was one of those defining moments where, um, you know, it was easy to kind of look at the negative things, but she was showing me how this young man in front of us, he's got struggles and trials everywhere around him, yet he continues to believe that he's going to overcome it. The timing was perfect to apply to where we were and where I wanted to go that season. We practiced in the rain two straight days. I mean, it was coming down like cats and dogs. I think guys really understood um, the importance of putting together a good week of work. And it was all started by Kurt. I mean, those two rain practice, I don't think a ball touched the ground. And from that day on, we were a different ball club, and it all started with him. In the playoffs, the Cardinals turned their play around. It's a flea flicker. Warner going to throw deep. Near side goal for Fence. He's in double coverage. It doesn't matter. Warner and Fitzgerald teamed up for one stunning performance after another. Caught at the five, heading for the pylon. It's oh. touchdown, Cardinals! Understand what we got at stake now. Ah! Hey man, it's on. like nothing you've ever felt before. Let's get back to business. Let's shock the world. As time looks left, rolls over the middle of the fence. Caught inside the five, breaks a tackle. Far side of the 25, Tom Warner going deep, airing it out, middle of the field, Vince is there, he corners the 10, foot down! Warner takes, back to throw, fade, left side, Fitzgerald. The NFL's most unlikely success story had done it again. He had taken the Cardinals to a place they had never been. When nobody else believed in us, when nobody else believed in me, you guys did, and we're going to the Super Bowl! At the start of Super Bowl 43, Warner was awarded the NFL Man of the Year in recognition for his football excellence and outstanding community service. Near the end of the game, the feel-good story of the year appeared headed toward its finest hour. But just like in Super Bowl 36, he was denied a storybook ending. Man, oh man, that close. We lost again at the last second uh, on an amazing play that uh, you would think would be similar to the Patriots game where it would just demoralize you, a game that you thought about often. But my perspective had changed, uh, not only in that season, but as a person and throughout my career. And I remember running down our sideline because I knew where my family was sitting. 
when they were crying and they were disappointed. And I just remember looking at them and saying, it's okay. You know, it, it's, it's no big deal. Life isn't about winning a, a football game. It's about the moments and it's about being able to relish and enjoy the things that God gives you. Kurt said to me that one of the mistakes that he had made, or one of the mistakes they had made when he was in St. Louis, was that when they lost the Super Bowl, um, you know, they never celebrated what they accomplished. And that really struck a chord with me because we had accomplished a tremendous amount, a lot more than anybody ever thought that we could do. And I'll never forget sending Kurt a text back just about how much he meant to me, he meant to our team, and how happy or how glad that I was that we were on this journey together. One year after leading the Cardinals to the doorstep of history, Kurt Warner had a performance for the ages. Fires over the middle, it's caught. Inside the 10 yard line, inside the five, touchdown, early new set. In their wild card win over the Packers, he completed 29 of 33 passes for 379 yards and five touchdowns. To think that a quarterback had more touchdown passes than he had incompletions in a game, that's incredible. Against the number two defense in the league. Fitzgerald wide open to the 20, close to the 10, Fitz is in! If you'd have made one more incompletion, we probably would have lost that game. I'm proud to say that I was out there with him on that day. Everybody else watches the beautiful throw, or at least, you know, I guess he doesn't throw spirals, but um, watches the beautiful catch. I watch that huge man with a lot of fury attack Kurt, and I watch Kurt go down and watch the head hit. I mean, that's what I watch. Even in the Super Bowl against the Titans, the big game-winning touchdown pass to Isaac Bruce, Kurt's laying on his back, and his head comes up to see the very end of it. One week after his memorable performance against the Packers, Warner faced the Saints, a game Brenda will never forget. I remember seeing the hit, and he did not move. And I said, it's his head, and he's not moving. I remember Zachary lying there and not moving. I know now that people were able to see the replay. It's personal. That is the love of your life out there, and he's not moving. I know my kids are at home watching, thinking, is dad coming home? And is dad coming home okay? I remember just thinking, I'm done. I'm done. I know Kurt might not be done, but I'm done. I can't do this. So when I saw him that night and could look him in the eye and to see that um, he was going to be okay, really the prayer started happening give him wisdom and he got wisdom <laughs> as I'm sure many of you expect uh, I'm here to announce my retirement from the National Football League everybody you know looks at the last game or the last two games the Packer game where we played so well and I played so well or you know the Saints game where I took the big hit but for me it was defined by my terms and it was defined by me knowing without a doubt that it was time to walk away. I relish the moments that I had, but I look forward to the next chapter. He is the best person I've ever met in my life. Absolutely the best person I've ever met. No matter if you just talk about football, or just talk about him being a husband, or a father, or humanitarian, he makes this world a better place. And so honored that I get to share this life with him.